Let me talk about the Sunday, Holy Spirit. We're going to meet. First of all, we're going to be together. As today is our last Sunday of the Coptic year, and tomorrow will be the eve of the new Coptic year, which is 1740. We'll start the new 1740. And if you notice that the reading of today is the same reading from last week, because also we read the same reading, which is the last week of Shachar Blisra. Last week we read the same reading from the book of Mark chapter 13, today from Matthew chapter 24, which all the reading actually focus on one thing, which probably one of the biggest questions all of us were raised, what will be the end of life? It's probably so many books written about what will be the end of life. You remember then the millennium, everybody said that's it. And the end of the millennium will be the end of life. And so many people actually wrote so many articles about when will be the end of life. But our Lord God Jesus Christ actually specifically, uh, the story goes as follows. Well. One, it, uh, he was inside the altar. And while he's walking onto, inside the altar, he sat opposite of the altar or across from the altar. One of his disciples came and asked, do you see this amazing, beautiful building? It seemed like the altar was so beautiful was so amazing. But then can you see how amazing this building here? But the Lord God actually responded to him and said, by the way, this building will be destroyed. Before the disciples discovered that, you know what? Jesus, it seemed like you know what will be then. He's already first time, he, he, he prophesying what will happen. But they asked him the tough question that all of us would love to know. What will be the sign of the end of life? And when, if you notice in Matthew chapter 2, 13, and also in uh, Matthew 24 and Mark, Mark 13, our Lord God Jesus Christ specifically talk about it in a very detail. You will find it more details in other books. Yeah. Yeah, for example, I tell you, he talks about number one, he said, what will happen to the world? There will be earthquake, will be war, will be uh, fame, will be hunger. That's number one, what will happen to the world. Then after that, actually, he spoke about also what will happen to the believers. They will be persecuted, there will be discrimination, they will be killed in, name, in the name of Jesus. And maybe some of those signs already happened in the beginning of Christianity when the disciples started to go out and teach the word of God with under a lot of Christianity, with under a lot of persecution. But also it happened and might happen again, especially in certain countries that do not have Christ, not a Christian country. Number three actually talked to them about really the destruction of Jerusalem. And this has already happened in 1970, during the time of Titus the king, and the, uh, Jerusalem was destructed and also the altar was destructed. And then after that he talks about the false Christ and the false prophets. Tell them, by the way, there will be a false prophets and a false pri pro prophets and false Christ will come. And then after that he spoke about the most important moment, which is the moment that when the Son of Man will come in his glory to judge the living and the dead. And he specifically actually talked here, he said, by the way, the sun will be darkened, the moon will be not to give any light, the stars will be falling down, the tower of the heaven will be shaken, and he said he would send his elected one to the four corners, and he would collect the, he would collect the, the angels will go out to the four corners, and then he would collect the, 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 the elected one, and they will come and the Lord God will say that he judge the world in righteousness and give each one according to his deeds. That's basically, and when you go home today, I would love if you can read Matthew 24 and also Mark 13. It will give you more detail, but this is basically talks about what will happen to the world, what will happen to the believer, also the destruction of Jerusalem, then after that the false prophets and the false uh, uh, Christ, then the moment that when the, second, when the Son of Man will come again. And that in the end here, if you notice, between last week reading and today's reading, focus on one thing. But he said, you know what? Don't worry about this. But the key is one thing only. Be watchful. Be watchful. Be watchful means be ready. Because you do not know neither the day or the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Be ready. And all of you, and I personally experienced 9-11, 22 years actually tomorrow will be, and honestly, that day, I personally felt this is it, that's it, this is the end of life. When you see everything is, people dying in the front of you, destruction everywhere, you feel like that's it. But really, the destruction or that you can feel this is the end of life here. So many people actually, when they were walking on the street or running, they were running for the life and feel that's it. It seemed like the end of life here. But therefore, actually, the, 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 the message that all the guys said today, 
Pray and be watchful. It means be ready or be alert. Be ready every day in your life. And I remember last week he gave the sermon. He said, look, one thing will help you to be ready when you start to actually have a good relationship with the Lord. Just to get every morning pray. At night time, pray the absolution of the 12th hour. And tell the Lord, you know what? All the sin that I did today, forgive me. And let's take every day, day by day, and be ready. Because you do not know neither the day or the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Also, Saint Peter, today when we read the epistle, Second Peter, chapter 3, Saint Peter actually gives the four important aspects here. I'm going to go quickly with them right now. Number one, he said, by the way, this is verse 18. But he said, but beloved, do not forget this one thing. He said, number one, one thing you have to know one thing. Because so much dilemma about what will be, how it will happen. And we can sit and debate and debate about what will happen. He said, but i tell you one thing. Uh, my, uh, he said, my beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Which means actually, it can happen, everything can happen on one day. Because in the eyes of the Lord, in the heart of the Lord, one day can equal to one thousand years. And one thousand years can be equal to one day. In, man, in one moment, all of us who experience Corona, and one day, all of us who sat home, nobody allowed to get out, and we felt that that's it. it could be the end of life. You never know. We never know what will happen. But that's number one rules, actually, St. Peter spoke about it. The rules of our Lord, our Lord, our Lord that one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years one day. Number two, a second point he said, actually, he said, by the way, the Lord is not slack with sending his promises. By the way, the promise of the Lord will be filled. That's why we read in the Gospel, says, heaven and earth will, be, will, be, will, go, no, will go away, but his word will never go away. That's a confirmation that what the Lord is saying, it will happen. But in the end here of the verse 9, he said, but one thing very important, he said, but that he should come to repent. This is all things, we have this reading here, with our Lord Jesus Christ prophesies about what will happen in the end of life, but don't worry about it. One day with the Lord, it could be equal to 1,000. But the key is one thing only, be ready, be ready, and he said, eh, and to come, and he said, but that all should come to repentance. And that will help us really. Are you repenting? Repentance is a very simple way. Repentance, come back to the Lord. And forgive me, I'm going to say that so many times. One of the most important, one of the important sacraments to get you to heaven is repent, uh, repentance and confession. But yet one of the sacraments that's really not practiced so much in our church lately. I see it more with the little kids, but on, I, I do not see it much with the elder young. Always we care about the kids who go for confession and repentance. But really this is a door, and as I always say, when you go to heaven, you will find you're going to try to walk in the door. You find a small door written on it, a door of repentance. But that second rule, he said, by the way, the concerning the Lord, his promises will be filled, but be ready, repent. The third actually rules here, actually, St. Peter talk about it. But that day, but, but the day of the Lord, which is the end of the, uh, the day of the Lord, will come at a thief in the night. You know what? By the way, you never know when you're going to leave. All of us here in this life here, Never know who's going to be living here. But the day of the Lord will come at the thief. There's no condition. It's not a certain age or a certain time. The end of life could be my end of day here on earth here. Therefore, he said, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. But don't worry about what they have, what will be the sign, what will happen, but you know what, be ready. And the final point actually spoke about it, St. Peter. He said, but therefore, since all the things will be dissolved, what manner of a person ought you to be? And he said two things here. To be in holy conduct and in godliness, holy conduct, which means he's telling us, you know what? Don't worry about the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. But the main thing is to repent and live a holy life, especially our Lord God, Jesus Christ, who said, "Be holy as your heavenly Father who is holy." You must learn how to live a holy life, especially right now when our society feels so much bad for bad for our little children. They are so much distracted with so many things, really, defile their mind and their heart. But we need actually to live, live life of holiness. But let me give you a good expression. I was reading this. Holiness, or basically to be holy, does not mean being sinless. Does not mean you're going to be perfect. Because the only one is sinless is God. And the only one is holy is God. But actually, I love this expression. Said, holiness is the process to change every day from the image of God to become the likeness of God. It's a daily change. I change every day. I fall into certain sin. I stand up and I repent and come back to the Lord. I fall into sin and I stand up again. Every day I will change every day. Every second in my life I change every second. 
and he changed from the image of God because when he created us, he said, let's make a man in the likes of our image. In the image of God, he created us male and female. So he changed every day from the image of God to become one day in the likes of God, which means everyone sees me, see Christ in me. But I love actually St. Peter, actually chapter three, second Peter chapter three talks about really how we should be ready. And he put three, four conditions. He said, number one, don't worry about the day of the one day at the Lord equal to 1,000 and one th and a thousand years as one year, as one day. Number two, he said, by the way, the promises of the Lord will happen. But the key is basically in the end of verse four, but repent, repent, and live with it is. Number th verse three, he talks about number three, actually said it, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Will come like a thief, a day that you do not know. And the final point, he said, by the way, what should you do? As, a, as He said, make sure that they live you to have a holy conduct and to live a life of holiness. And as I said, holiness does not mean that you are perfect, but holiness is a person that is struggling every day, fighting sin every day to come back to the Lord. It change every day from the image of God to become the life of God. May the Lord grant us really how to change every day, how to listen to this beautiful gospel and see, look, what, what will be the end of the world. But you know what? To make sure that I have to be ready every day and I have to maintain a good life of repentance. And I have to also to maintain a life of holiness. Holiness is the only condition that we see God. But yet, holiness does not mean that they're being perfect or sinless. But holiness is a person that really is struggling every day in his life, in a spiritual struggle, to come close to God. May grant God grant us to be ready for this moment. Just a quick bit about Kalam al Nahr, Ashan al Ahad al Akhir, in the Shah al Mansi. وهو قرينا النهارده من مكه 24 نفس الاصح ده تقرا نفس الانجيل ده تقرا الاسبوع اللي فات من من مرقص 13 وكان بيتكلم السيد المسيح وهو خارج واحد التلاميذ قال له ايه المبنى الجميل ده؟ فقال له المبنى ده اللي هو على الهيكل ده قال له هيتهدك بالكامل فلما فهم كده قال له طب لنا ايه علامات نهايه العالم؟ فاتكلم معاهم وقال لهم ايه اللي هيحصل للعالم؟ وايه اللي هيحصل للمؤمنين؟ واتكلم معاهم عن خراب اورشليم واتكلم معاهم برضه عن الايه؟ عن الفولس المسيح الكذاب والبراب الكذاب وبعد يتكلم على مجيء المسيح وفي الاخر خالص قال لهم على فكره كل ده مهم جدا ولكن اهم حاجه ايه؟ واتش اند بري صلوا واصحبوا ميزه ان انت تكون ايه جاهز كل يوم جاهز كل يوم يعني واتكلمنا النهارده برضه على سنت في الكاثوليك ابيستل النهارده من بطرس الثانيه اصح ثلاثه بيتكلم عن اربع حاجات مهمين قال لهم نمبر 1 حط علامه مهمه جدا او قاعده مهمه قال لهم على فكره خلي بالكم ما تهتمش قوي بامتى ولا ان يوم واحد عند الرب ك1000 سنه و1000 سنه ايه كيوم واحد يعني ممكن كل الاحداث تحصل في لحظه واحده بس وكلنا اختبرنا ناي ليفن وكلنا اختبرنا كورونا ممكن في لحظه واحده بس الدنيا تتغير كلها ثاني شيء قال لهم على فكره ربنا هيكون ايه لا لا يتطا يتباطا في الرب في عوده ولكن في الاخر خالص كان لهم ايه؟ ولكن بل هو يريد ان يقبل الجميع الى التوبه. يبقى نمبر تي قال لهم على فكره اهم حاجه ان انتوا تفكروا ايه؟ في شهاده التوبه. ثالث نقطه اتكلم عليهم قال لهم على فكره يوم الرب ياتي قلص. فبالتالي ما تعرفش نهايتك ايه؟ ويومك ايه في بالظبط يعني؟ ونهايه العالم مين؟ فيمكن يجي قلص فخلي بالك جاهز. وفي الاخر خالص لما قال لهم ايه؟ بولس بطرس الرسول بيكتب بيقول لهم يجب عليكم اذا ان تثيروا بسيره مقدسه وايه وتقوى يعني معنى ان كده ان احنا اهم حاجه لو نسمع كل الكلام ده ونهايه العالم تكون عايشين احنا كلنا في ايه؟ في سيره مقدسه وحياه التقوى، قلنا سيره مقدسه ان الواحد ايه يكون مقدس مش معناه ان هو بيرفكت ولا من هو بلا خطيه ولكن شخص بيجاهد كل يوم بيجاهد كل يوم كل ما يعرف انت احنا بنعلم الاولاد الصغيرين نقول لهم المطانيه مهمه لان بنعلمهم ممكن تقوم تقع وتقوم تقع وتقوم بس عايش حياه التوبه اليوميه حتى هذه هي هي حياه القداسه، ربنا يبارك فيكم ويجعلنا كلنا جاهزين لهذه اللحظه ولنا كل المجد والكرام الى الابد امين.